Because it's Monday. It's Monday. When it's Monday. Because Friday was our last show. It's, this is accurate. And now it's Monday, so like we're re, re, reorienting ourselves again. Good morning as we reorient. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm not even sure I knew we were live just there. We are live, yes. Well, good morning. Welcome to Brian and Carrie in the morning. I'm going to preface what today's show is. The power of change. How to have more wealth, health, and love in your life without fear, worry, and stress. I saw you you're looking at my notes. I was I was actually looking as I was listening to you. I wasn't really reading, though. You're taking my notes. No, no, no. I wasn't taking anything. We've got a full house today. Do 15, we already? 15 people already in wow. the house. I purposely waited today to activate the phone while you were talking so it didn't start blaring over you. I thought that was Maybe smart. that's why you were looking at my notes. You were seeing where I was in the notes so that you could tell when it was time to start. I was really unconsciously looking Look at, at the, the hearts already coming in, Good man. Good morning, Jessica, Steve Montfinesse, Nina, yeah. Lisa. Karen Stacey. Roberts, Stacy, Michelle Adams, Please, um, Robin and Camley. She's about to pop. I I miss you, kid. When do you do, Robin? You're due like... Laurel Holmes is here? Any day, I think. Um, I believe it's a bank holiday in the UK. If it you're is. in the UK, is it a bank holiday? It is a bank holiday. I know for a fact. Uh, not because I'm well traveled. You know these things? Well, because uh, the lovely uh, 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 Lee Patterson tagged us. Oh, and her son's in a little there. post, and there's no school today. So, yes. yeah. So, look at that. Everybody's here. My beautiful mentor says Robin Ann. Brian Baggerbrands is here. Jess, you're here. Monica's here. Melanie. Melanie. Tyra Doling, welcome to the show. I yes. Know this is the first time that. Uh, well, at least the first time that we've seen your name, not necessarily the first time you've watched the show. Michelle Chapman Smith is here, I think her. You know, because it's Memorial Day in the state. We're the yes. only ones who are not on holiday today. You know what? I can't. I in think. Canada. I think Canada may have some kind of holiday or Quebec. You think so? It was so dead outside today. It was. Like we we, we drove into town today. Yeah. This morning, and it was just like barren, and it's not usually barren that time of day. No, I agree. It's a Something's bit going odd. on. And, yeah. Uh, hey, good Clint. Morning, Clint. You know, Clint. I want to give a shout out to Clint and June because they are like rocking. They're a little, sh you know, they're a little shop down in Tennessee. And like, are they open? I, I believe that they're open. Clint, are you Get guys out. open? I want to say I think that they're open or that they're near. I mean, they're probably not open today because it's Memorial Day. Right. But, well, um, yeah. I believe that they're near open. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's exciting. I like when Jessica says, "What a crew." What a crew. Did you guys have a nice weekend? Did we, you have a nice weekend? We did. We did. We had a fantastic. We weekend. really did. Everything about it was just delicious. I love that Cheryl Robinson says, "Good morning, Crew Nation." No, June 24th. Okay, so Clint, we stand corrected. Okay. I um, stand corrected, not you. I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm being monitor, like, focused Central right now. Uh, September, says Robin Ann Camley. I feel like I'm going to pop. Uh, 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 golly, she's, she's almost there. I but swear, September? Yeah. That's like a long time I had now. a feel. For some reason, I thought you were closer than that. Right. But you know what? I know the feeling. I know the feeling from when I was pregnant. Chase, that little kid was not so little. I felt like I was going to pop with him by, like... Five months pregnant. Big bag of potatoes, what like I was, 10 pounds. 10 pounds? Every ounce well, of 10 Chase pounds. Well, Chase was 10 pounds. He was 8 pounds, 10 ounces. But that's, yes. I'm not a very big woman. You're a very small woman. So that's Absolutely. A, that's a big deal for me. Yes. Uh, Clint, Laurel wants to know where in Tennessee is your uh, little shop. shop. Today's show, just a reminder, the power of change, how to have more health, wealth, and love in your life without fear, worry, or stress. Because you know what? Everybody knows that the prospect of change makes people scared. Makes them skittish. It I makes agree. them worry. It makes them anxious. Yep. It makes them all kinds of stressed out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about a lot of things today related to that. We talked a great deal about that this weekend, you and I. Did we? You know what Brian and I did this weekend? Brian and I um, relaxed. We, we talked. Did. You did. And we ate had sex. A delicious food, had sex, and wine. That's what we did this weekend. Yeah, almost in that order. Almost. Yeah. Yes. No, it's true. We had a really unusual weekend because we've been like to and from Arizona. I, I don't even... We just had a lot. Uh, we had crew day. I, we had crew day. We had a lot of weekends that were kind of occupied. Mm -hmm. This was the first weekend we've had nothing to do. Nothing. So that's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. We uh, we have a very large uh, uh, deck. I'm pointing up there because it's up there, just it's above literally us. Literally right above us. Yeah, but it's massive. Yeah. Like you, I, I've always joked, you could fit 50, 60 people on there comfortably. Mm -hmm. So just the two of us, we were looking at the mountains and listening to the birds and drinking some vino and talking about life. That sex, eat and nap. That was our and, weekend. And conversation. Yeah, you said Talk, conversation. Yeah. That, that was our weekend. Um, Absolutely. I don't know if anybody saw the glass catastrophe. But <laughs> I posted the glass catastrophe on Instagram because we always have this running joke on right. the show. Cecily and myself, the glass matters. Yes, and I broke a good and glass. And so, Brian, it was this like slow motion thing too. Yeah. Brian was sitting yeah. with his wine glass on the corner of his chair. 
And I remember thinking to myself, only because I've done it, that that's probably not a good place for that glass. And then all of a sudden it was like. Yeah, it was. It was. It really was slow motion <laughs> because so when it fell, I, I, I like hit the bottom of it to put yeah. it up in the air. Yeah. How I managed to do that without actually spilling the wine. Yeah. That's really fucking cool. Right. So it fell off the chair. I popped it up so it went straight up in the air. And then I just watched it go down. And I went to reach for it, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab this. And then crack it in your hand. And I'm going to crack it in my yeah. hand because it's crystal. Like, it's very delicate. Yeah. So I'm like, no. But <laughs> it's so exactly what he did. But it was so symbolic, too, yes. because it was our last um, um, evening of wine for the next five months because of our, of right. our training cycle. <laughs> right. So we're like, that was... Well, we break it, right? It's like we broke a, gra a glass like the Greeks. Exactly. Okay. And welcome back, Bobby Wilson. I see you yes. today. Yes, I'm rolling up because uh, Papa Draps, Gov is here. Love Gov. Angela Prather, Dr. Ann Shivas. I have a crush on her. You know what? Anne I does. love Dr. Ann Shivas. Uh, 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 Cat Williams, June is here. Hi, June. Yes, Carl McPhee. Of course, Steve Montefinesse. Just, just have love too much love. Nicole Wright's here. Bobby Wilson, as you just mentioned. Mama Draps is here. This is crazy. June's but okay. Please. Listen, everybody up. June and Clint moved to Tennessee to open up this little gift shop. So June Bugs yeah. Art C Cafe and Gift Shop. Really? That's amazing. Grand opening June twenty fourth. I am going to be there in spirit. June um, Bugs June. Art Cafe. You know what we should do, June Bug and Clint? We should add a little like a uh, 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 prepared like fresh prepared food uh, portion. To your little shop, Carrie and I will move down there because we want to open a little cafe. Well, we intend to open a little cafe one day where I'll cook and you do sandwiches. I and don't think June and Clint would have a problem with that. Let's do it. You know my only Are you problem in? about Tennessee, though? Snakes. That's my only problem about Tennessee. Are there snakes in Tennessee? Yes, there's snakes in Tennessee. Is this confirmed? There's like rattlesnakes and stuff in Tennessee. Confirmed? There's venomous snakes in Tennessee. Do it again. Confirmed? June, can you please qualify that for me? There is venomous snakes in, in Tennessee. I'm and by the sure way, Dr. Ann Shivers has a crush on us as well, so that's pretty cool. I love that. I dig it. All right. They have it in the plans already. Happy Memorial Day to you there, uh, uh, Neil McDonald. You know, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. So you just, first Tam of all. Tamara Christie's here. Hi, Tamara. Tamara Christie, where the hell have you been? She's busy working at this I time know, but day. even with the whole, no, not on, the, not on Brian and Karen Oh, morning, okay. But even with the whole working thing, I'd hear from Tamara. Right? I'd hear from her. But I don't hear from her anymore. Are you angry at us? Tamara's angry at us. Tamara, are you angry at us? Because I have mad love for I her. I want to say Tamara has got a nice long hairdo going on right she now. She does. She's growing out her hair with me. Yeah, I, I stalk Tamara in the hopes that one day she actually, you know, uh, talks to me again. So Tamara. <laughs> hello. Um... Oh, yeah, I knew. Okay, first of all, number one, I've got lots of surprises today. And I'm not even going to tell you what they all are right now. I don't know what they are. Brian doesn't even know. He came over. She's to been was, fiddling. You've been fiddling. He actually asked me before if everything was all right. Because I was so, like, I get so myopic when I'm focused. Like, I, yes. I, I don't think I, I said two words to Brian for an hour. It was heavy like, energy. I was just, like, doing what I was doing. But you'll see what's coming up with that. Um, yeah, I want to know what's coming up with that. My second thing is. Um, By the way, June's afraid of snakes. Bubby. Yeah. Have you ever, do you have anything, is there anything I do on the show as a repetitive pattern, like in my language or stuff like, cause you just did something like four times and I was like, I just realized you do that all the time. Yeah. What do I do? Uh, you do this a lot. Ah, you do that a lot. <laughs> you know what yours is? What? As you're formulating thoughts, you go, ah, uh, 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 yeah, I just I noticed it. I love that. It's part of my cool quirk. By the way, I how's your beard it. looking today? Your beard is looking awesome. The beard's looking good, eh? Right? What do you think, guys? Don't, don't shave it, okay? It's one year ago tomorrow yeah. that I, I started growing this out. Yeah. This is Molly's anniversary. My beard's name is Molly. It's her anniversary. Gosh, that's right. One year ago tomorrow. 364 days as of right now. How does time go so fast? I tell you, man. Woof. I, I tell you. I don't even know what to Angela say. Angela Prather, by the way, says we need to do a crew day in uh, Knoxville because there's so many people you know, down in Tennessee. We're just going to take crew days on the road. That's we are. That's what we're doing. We're taking That's crew part days of the plan. The Absolutely. You know, absolutely. We're going to do that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Dr. Ann Shiva says the beard is on point. Uh, Lee Patterson says, awesome beard. Molly is awesome. Thanks for playing my game with that, Bobby. Um, I appreciate that. Welcome, Ashley Rowe. This is the third visit to the show. I appreciate you guys and your truth. You have been a super positive addition to my morning. Well, welcome, oh, how Ashley sweet. Rowe. I love it when newbie crewbies chime in. Yes. You new, chime in. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Neil, Neil McDonald says, uh, get Brian on the ice and play some hockey. Played it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I grew up playing hockey. I played at a reasonably high level. So, yeah, hockey's not new to me at all. 
Michelle Adams says looking good. Love it. Uh, Robin and Cammy thought I had a stutter. <laughs> Not a stutter. Not a stutter. No, no, no. Um, is it time to start the show? It's it's time. I've just been having fun. I got one of my surprises to show you right now, though. Well, should I start the show? Yeah, well, you you say it because it's going to go in line with what I'm about to do. Hey, crew. Yeah? Let's eliminate your limits. <laughs> Wow, look at all the changes already. Did you, you guys notice it? You don't even know. They can't hear us right now. Oh, yeah, can yeah, yeah, we're right there. <laughs> you got to bear with me. When I, I come in with new things, it takes me a while to get used to it. She has to orient herself to what monitor is live. That one's live. This bit. one's delayed. Just a little bit. So that was cool. You don't even do you, know. Do you I'm like that one? Well, let me start by saying welcome to Brian and Karen in the morning. Mm -hmm. Today's show is all about the power of change, how to have more health, wealth, and love in your life without... Fear, worry, or stress. So exciting. Look at you on today's show. We're live from the beautiful Mount Tremblant, Quebec. We're live five mornings a week. So tell your friends, tell your friends, mm -hmm. tell your friends, tell your friends. Neighbors, family, dogs, tell everybody. We go live at 10 a.m. Eastern, but our pre-show starts at 9.50. That's when you should join us because that is when all the fun happens. I've already said what today's show's all about. I know, right? Because you got like all kinds of ready with that. So the two things I want to say right now is how we start every show. Crew Nation, where my crew at? Crew! 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 crew. Yes! And if you you know we're going to earn it. We always earn yeah, it. Are. I even forgot to ask for a share in the pre-show. So let me no, emphatically good. ask right now, if you're watching, share this out. The whole world needs to understand the power of change and how to do it with grace. Yeah. Absent of fear, worry, and stress. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Yes. Hold. Everybody's got to hold still. Okay. Because I'm about to hijack wow. the show. And Brian doesn't even know I'm hijacking the show. I'm just going to look at the monitor for a few minutes because I am so... Like, Is everybody ready? I'm ready. Because look I... All the hearts. All the hearts are coming. I have a special announcement. Yeah. That Brian's got no idea. Are you pregnant? No, no, no. Can I had a ready? vasectomy. Are you ready? Not possible. Everybody, I would like to announce yeah. that the one and only... Um, hold on. The one and only Brian Grasso has been nominated. No, I haven't. For a streaming award. No, I haven't. As best male co-host. No, I haven't. I have known for three days. Come on. I have known for three days. <laughs> yeah. But I've been waiting because I wanted to get a nice little graphic in get there. Get the fuck out of here. I, I was on the site the other day and I noticed that somebody had nominated you. I would well. like to thank the Academy. That is awesome. Get the fuck out of here. Surprise. Oh, that was so one more good. Time. Hold on. Did you see that? <laughs> Best male co-host, Brian Grasso of Carrie Ke uh, Brian and Carrie in the morning. I am so impressed with myself right now. I'm impressed with us. How fun. You know what? I'm impressed with Crew Nation. It has, it has been Whoever nominated me, how sweet. I know. I'm, I'm yeah. so excited. Look I, at us. You know? Three months into a live stream, a worldwide competition, yeah. and we both get nominated. For female and male best host. I love it. Get the fuck out and you know, can I tell you something? Wow. So I, I feel very touched right now. <laughs> you know, we, wow. we are going to get you to the topic of the day, which, you know, in case you missed it, is the power of change. How Look to have at more you. Health, wealth, and love in your life without fear, worry, or stress. Yes. But before we do that, I just want to say that um, you have no idea how much I love surprises. They are my all time very favorite thing. thing. So the fact that I've been sitting on that for a few days has been, has been a very big challenge for me. Yeah. Since like Thursday, I've been sitting on that. Wow. Wow. I love what's going on with the show today. I love that I've been nominated. I love we've both been nominated. Now you know why I've been so quiet for like an hour. I thought something was wrong. I thought I fucked up or did the dishes badly or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You do the dishes right. By the way, Elisa says our show is actually four months. It's tomorrow, but it's not. Because we've been we've been doing live streams off and on for six months. Yep. But we count when this new studio was really kind of getting itself in place. Mm -hmm. So it really is only about 12 weeks that we have been truly doing Brian Carey in the morning. Yeah. The way we do now. Yeah. I don't want to do the show anymore. I just want to bask in our nominees. I stumped him. <laughs> I love surprises. Oh my goodness. Why would I need a hug, Clint? I'll always take a hug. Don't get me wrong. Um, Brian Sackowitz, how are we doing on the shares today? Yeah, you know what? I'd love to I know because know we're, we are going to get to a good show today, obviously. And, um, I don't know if you Thank you, it. Cecily. Thank you, Muna. But my target this week, everybody, is to make it 100 share a day week. Yeah, why that not, right? Y'all got to work. We all, we we all going to deliver. We got, we got to do our job, right? And you yeah. guys are going to do your job. Thank you, Jessica. 
Uh, Lisa Arsenal says that's your her favorite shirt of yours. Thank you. Yeah. But, um, no, Lisa, it actually wasn't his birthday because then we went to Spain and we were gone right. for a week and there was a big interruption. Exactly. So technically it was um, like February 15th. So June a, 15th. But a little after that, yeah. even to be like honest. A week yeah. later, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I love the way Elisa knows. I love that everybody. That our bir- my birthday represents the first five day a week, right? but we went to Spain after that. Yeah. So it kind of got all discombobulated. Exactly. You guys are awesome. Well, so I hope I didn't throw you off too much there. No, right? I think that was fantastic. Robin Ann Campbell says she's working it. Where are our shares at? If we, if Brian Sackwood is not available. Oh, he is here. Uh, he's heading to the pool to throw my son in. Good. Kick your son in the pool. I love that. Let's nominate an assistant share captain today. I, I say Lee Patterson. Is, oh, yeah. Let's do it. You that. don't want to get a Scots woman mad. No. Right? You don't want to piss off a Scot. I'm Scottish. Well. Does that stand to reason? Yes. I don't know. I don't get mad very often. You're not a mad kind of person, but when you get mad, it's a little scary. Everybody knows it. Don't push me past the limit, people. <laughs> you do shit like that, then it kind of... Not so scary, really. But when, it get, when she gets, like, authentically mad, it's not a, it's not a happy place Lisa for everybody. Lisa as well jumped into co-captain. All right. Lisa and Lee are co-captains. We're leaving the share team to you guys. I love our crew. Stacy Scottish as well. Today's show, the power of change and to have more health, wealth, and love in your life without fear, worry, or stress. Now, I'd like to start by talking about two things. You guys ready? Number ready. one, this show is rather unscripted today. Yeah. Okay. Usually we have, and we're going to actually do behind the scenes live streams for you to show you how we prepare for Brian and Carrie in the morning. Yeah. When we prepare, how we prepare, mm-hmm. how it all unfolds itself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's evolving. That's yes. evolving a great deal for a lot of reasons. One of which is that our son is soon, he's going to be done school soon. In two and a half weeks. And he's yep. going to be producing our show. So a lot of the time in the evening, you, you, he, and I will be, you know, producing shows for the next day. That's right. Right. But we're going to show you some behind the scenes and all of that. But suffice it to say, usually Brian and Carrie in the morning has a bit more of a production quality to it. Meaning mm-hmm. we have some points, we have some talking, you know, uh, parameters, etc. Today is blind on purpose. We knew what we wanted to talk about. Yeah. We named the show accordingly. We yeah. said, you know, let's just have a discussion. Let's just talk about change in mm-hmm. our life and what we did and how we did it and why we did it. Mm-hmm. And then just see if we can round into lessons for Crew Nation from there. So this is a little different today. This is like right? acapella live stream right now. Acapella. Yeah. That's, acapella can be rehearsed, you know. Well, just means it doesn't accompany music as well. Just go with it. Acapella. It's like without all the... How about improv? Improv. Okay. <laughs> can we get this? So cute. Okay. Now the other thing I want to tell you up front was this. Wait, what the fuck was it? Oh, yeah. Here it is, okay? Now, you have to understand this. You don't have to be a fitness person to make this understandable. You just have to, like, wrap your head around it, okay? okay. For the past five, six months or so, in that neighborhood, right, give or take, we have been training as power lifters. Yes. Okay? Which means every day in the gym, five, four or five days a week, has been squats, deadlifts, bench press, and some auxiliary exercises that serve yeah. to make those better, but not a lot of them, exactly. right? So it's primarily for five or six months, yeah. been squat, deadlift, bench press, heavy. Yeah. I honestly, in the last five months, don't know if I've lifted anything up for more than four reps. Right. Yeah. Everything has been a heavy load. You warm up well, you mobilize yeah. well, and then you start hitting heavy shit yeah. for two, three, four reps, sometimes just one. Yep. Yeah. And that's our life for about five, six months. Yes. Okay? My nutrition, your nutrition, has been comparable to that. This is called training cycling. Mm -hmm. When you cycle your training, right? Mm -hmm. When you start lifting heavier weights, you know, you really push your body to a limit on the strength capacity, Mm -hmm. your nutrition matches. This is what most people, like, I suppose the the hobbitizing of fitness Mm -hmm. don't really understand. That, you know, you have to gain some weight. In yes. order to to lean out really well. Yes. Right? The whole status quo thing in fitness is, is actually a really challenging thing. And it's the, not ideal at all. It's not ideal. The right. body is meant to move. you got to gain some weight, yes. lose some weight. You just got to do it intelligently with cycles, right? Mm-hmm. So my nutrition has matched my training. Mm-hmm. I've been eating big calories for the last five, six months. Yeah. I've gained a lot of weight. I weigh about 255 right now. Mm-hmm. Yes, some of it is body fat. Absolutely. But m- most of it is just thickness in my shoulders, my chest, my legs, my ass that, you know, correspond to all the heavy weights I was Mm -hmm. lifting. Right. So if you're not like nutritionally savvy, this might not mean anything to you, but again, just hear the parameters, right? For the last five, six months, every single day, Mm -hmm. 
I've been having about 240 grams of protein every day, mm -hmm. about 300 grams of carbs every day, mm -hmm. and about 75 grams of fat every day. It's a pretty good calorie increase. Mm -hmm. I have pretty good calorie intakes, lots of food. I've really enjoyed it. All those carbohydrates, I'm eating rice and sweet potatoes and <laughs> all kinds of good shit. What are you laughing at? I'm, I'm laughing with where this conversation is going. Because yeah, because you know the punchline, right? Of course. So, our, our, so that was the last five or six months. Mm -hmm. Our official cut day or our cut cycle starts today. Yeah. Today is everything starts. Our new training, which is not one to four reps anymore. Now it's sets of like 15, 20 reps, right. which gives me a mental challenge, I might add. Yep. Repeating the same thing 20 fucking times? Yep. God. Anyways, the whole point of my story. Yeah. What are you laughing at? Nothing. I'm just, I just take it. I'm <laughs> listening. I'm taking notes and listening. I'm not I, li I like you that you're taking notes. <laughs> I just keep touching your nose. Okay. <laughs> so, we got our new nutritional daily requirements from our coach today. This morning, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, is when we talked about them. You ready? 240 grams of protein a day for the last six months. Now it's 255. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually having more protein, mm -hmm. right? 75 grams of fat every day I was having for the last five, six months. Now it's 100 grams of fat. Mm -hmm. More fat. 300 grams of carbs every day is now 145. It's actually 140. Fuck me. You Are just keep mine. I have more carbs. Than She's me. eating more carbs That's than me. That's never happened. That is half as many carbs as my body is used to. Right? So now if you have nutritional savvy and all that, right, you know that going from 300 grams of carbs to 140 grams of carbs is a big deal. Mm -hmm. For example, like my dinners almost always the last six months have involved like 200 grams of sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. which is about 45 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. That's like one third of my allowable intake per day now. Right. So the point is training, yes, but nutrition has changed. Yes. So much like that. Yeah. That's why we're doing this show. Yeah. Right? So I have a lot to say, but you, yeah. it's definitely uh, your let turn. Let me just give my framing on myself on all of this, right? Yes. <laughs> so last night, um, this is my second cut cycle that I've done right. with Jason Phillips, our nutrition coach, right? So I was all ready and I'm like, I know what's coming. I'm good. I've, I've been through this before, Right. And then last week, we started our preparation for it, like doing a deload training, which was shifting us into the different types of training, mm -hmm. right? And so it is. It's like, you know, 100 repetitions of stuff and 20 repetitions of stuff. And 100? Like, it's really hard unless you're a strength athlete, which, which we are, okay? Yeah, like yeah, my yeah. body is genetically predispositioned for strength. It's really hard for someone to understand that I would, it is less effort for me to go into a gym and squat 305 pounds than it is to do 20 repetitions of right. anything. I would rather front right? squat 405. So it's a major 100%. A shift and a challenge on, on my physical you know, being, right? That's number one. Number two, my first um, cut with Jason, I had a cheat meal once a week. Yeah. So last night, right. I get my, Good I lost it. I get my macros from Jason. And it says, um, here are your you know, macros. I have 155 protein, 145 carbs, and 55 grams of fat, okay? <laughs> and then it says, in brackets, no cheat meals. Yes. And I was like, what? And I, I, like, I went into this immediately, whoa, like, I don't know what to do with that. But then I, the whole show today is based on, like, how do you create the change without the stress and the fear and worry? And it loops into that. It does. Right? So, so, it's, okay, so that's the framework. Now, that's the context, yes. right? Let me, I, I've extracted some, uh, some quotes. Yeah, All I'm right. glad you pulled that one. Angela Prather, yeah. who I adore, mm -hmm. who's down there in Tennessee, she wrote a few comments ago, quote, poor Brian, mm -hmm. at my extremely low carb count. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jessica, again, who I absolutely adore, quote, that's tough. Right. All of which were pertaining to my 300 grams of carbs to 140, mm -hmm. okay? So what's our point? What Is Angela mean? wrong? No, she's not wrong. Right. I appreciate, And she's being empathetic, so mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Jessica, same. Yeah. Empathetic. So, guys... Not about you. It's mm -hmm. not about Angela. It's not about Jessica. It's about the pretense, right? Mm -hmm. Mindset matters most. Mindset matters most. Mm -hmm. So here's the key. You ready? And you've heard it before. You've heard it a thousand times. Our question is, are you doing anything with this wisdom? Okay? Unless you prepare to do things you've never done, yeah. you won't ever have what you've never had. Absolutely. And that is where 
goal setting and romanticizing. That's where the romance ends. Mm -hmm. We are so good at dreaming the goal. Yep. We are so good at visualizing the goal. Mm -hmm. We are often so shit at doing the things necessary to take yourself there. So the thing for me is, although again, this is not about Angela or Jessica or what they wrote. They're just being, you know, very sympathetic towards, towards me. And I appreciate yep. that. I don't look at it as tough. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't look at it as poor me. Yes. You don't want to know why? Because I have a different perspective on the matter. If I want to get to that point, which I've never been to before, then I've got to do what is necessary to get there, yep. right? That isn't hard. That's not tough. That's just a choice. Yeah. And the way you perspectify the choice matters, mm -hmm. right? And this is what I've always said. You cannot get excited about the goal, mm -hmm. but hate the process of getting there. Absolutely. That is the killer. Yeah. And you, when, you, yeah. when you get excited about the goal, but you hate the process of getting there, what the fuck's the point of doing it? Absolutely. You've got to start to question yourself. Is this what you really want? Yes. Right? Because goals, dreams, aspirations, they do come true. Mm -hmm. They can come true for you, for anybody. But most people are not willing to do what's necessary to achieve them. And that's the staging point. Yeah. But that's a mindset. You know, absolutely. And yeah. you know, I, I want to say this because I think that this is important to understand or to re-emphasize because we talk about this all the time. Um, it, it's a mistake to think that that just comes naturally for Brian and I, yeah. right? You know, there are certain things that, you know, we don't have to like think through anymore. It's just, we've turned it as an unconscious process, right? Right, right, right. Um, but it's really important to understand and we've said it, right? You know, going to the gym and doing 20 repetitions of something sure. is a mental challenge for the first week for me. Same, And my Same. brain wants to say, you know what? I'd so much rather be under a 225 pound squat bar. Yep, absolutely. But it's up to me at that point to choose my language. 100%. And, and we talk about that all the time. On Learn the show, your language, right? yeah. You're choosing, you're choosing your perspective on all of this. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we're not bringing in negative language yep. that is facilitating, oh, this is going to be tough. Poor me. Or that's, in anything in yeah, life, business, exactly. life, relationships, the whole nine That's yards, the key, right? right? And so another quote, Lee Patterson, beautiful quote. Does it help that you guys are doing this together? Does it help motivate each other? Great question. Yeah. And it's one that we hear a lot. Yeah. You want to know the answer? No. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. But you want to know why I know it's not a dual motivation? Because for the last five, six months, we've been on the same training agenda. Yeah. For the year prior to that, we weren't. Yes. For the year yeah. prior to that, Carrie was in a massive cut. Mm -hmm. And doing cardio and high reps and yeah. low, low carbs. Whereas I was actually looking to compete in powerlifting. So my daily diet, like I was having rice and sweet potatoes, like blended in a straw because I needed to get all the carbs in and lift heavy shit. Yeah. So we actually have often been on very different cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and those are different mind fucks. Yeah. Right? So so it's not a motivate each other kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not saying it hurts. It's more fun. It's, it's just, more, you know, know, it's fun. But you know, can I tell you something else? It, it actually speaks to the reality of when you choose your circle of influence, and that includes the litmus test of who you spend the rest of your life with, mm -hmm. are there comparable interests? And if they're not... Are there comparable, not motivation, but like, what's the word I'm looking for? Where, where, you know, if I were to, when I was a boxer and you weren't, you would still support me. We have, we, we you know have I mean? like, we have like a philosophical understanding of where right. we both want to be. I mean, it yes. was, when we first got together, it was a, you know, there were certain things that were like an absolute must for both of us. Physical culture. Absolutely. And yeah. um, ambition and drive and success. Yes. Like those were just things that were, they were status quo they were important to have together. Right. So. so, okay, so again, this is just discussion between you and I. Yeah. Right? This is not like a rehearsed. I just, I jotted down some notes. I can see those. Right? So, so how to, look at, let me start here. First of all, okay, here's a mindset thing that I came to years upon years ago. Mm -hmm. And it has served me so well. And I want to deliver it to you as well. Okay? You and I have talked about it a thousand times. People talk about change mm -hmm. as if it is a scary thing. Mm -hmm. As if um, it, it is it is natural for change to come with uh, uncertainty and unsettling, all of which becomes negative, right? Yes. You know what I realized years and years and years ago? Um, none of that, it's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. And here's why, okay? Change is inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> it's inevitable. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mean that just superficially, such as we grow older, mm -hmm. which we do. But if you think about anything, say you're an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. 
I have a founder's mastermind right now working with a lot of entrepreneurs who are at what I would call phase one of their entrepreneurial game plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that involves X, Y, and Z strategy. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we exhaust that, we have to go to phase two, which involves a very different strategic uh, overview. You can't do the same thing for 20 Mm -hmm. years in business, in fitness, in nutrition, in your relationships, in your mindset. Change isn't a choice. Evolution happens. Mm -hmm. So either you are resisting change or you're flowing with it. Those are your only two options. And I think that's actually something that I wish I could articulate better and I'll work on. I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm laying down. Maybe I'll work on articulating that a little bit better. But people characterize change the wrong way. We all in our society, we talk about afraid to change. My friend, change is going to fucking happen. You have no choice in the matter. The the earth rotates around the sun. The seasons change. You grow older. Skin cells die Mm -hmm. spiritually, philosophically, biologically, physiologically. Change is happening Mm -hmm. whether you fucking like it or not. So you're either going to resist it. And that is when change becomes scary. Mm -hmm. That is when you bottleneck your energy. Mm-hmm. And you grip on and you white knuckle the life you have and, and, and you don't want it to move. It, it's not you who moves it. It's moving. Yeah. So you're either going to white knuckle grip it and try to keep it still, which creates massive internal misalignment. Yes. Or you're going to flow with it mm-hmm. and create strategies along the way to, to maximize it. Yeah. Now, did I explain that well enough? Like, are you guys picking that up? I mean, I, I think you I'd love to hear, like, see comments or hearts comments, or anything else. Yeah. Hearts, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Um, you know, I'm going to add to that because this is a topic that Brian and I, we, we actually talk about a great deal because we're always changing and evolving. Yes. Right? You know, and um, over the years, as I've changed, you ever notice that nobody ever comments when you're changing for the worse? <laughs> they always tell you when you're changing yes. for the better. But, like, think about that for a second, okay? You, you've lost like 20 pounds. Nobody comments about that because it, it, it bugs them on the inside perhaps. Yeah. But if you, um, no, wait, that's not what I meant to say. You lose 20 pounds. Yeah. It's for the better. And they, they comment on it. Oh, sure. you know, you've lost 20, you've changed so much, but nobody ever comments on like, I just totally fucked up what I wanted to say. You know what? It was right I, there. I know exactly. You know where I was I, going? I do. Look at <laughs> Look, it's like this, okay? And you you correct me if I've misspoken for you, okay? <laughs> when when people make negative, less than ideal, less than serving changes in their yes. lives that impact them yes. negatively, yep. people don't say shit. Exactly. People don't say shit. Exactly. They whisper behind your back. Yes. They fucking plan an intervention. Yes. But when you make change that serve you, yep. you lose weight, you find true love, you make more money in business. Well, now everybody thinks you're an asshole yep. and they, they step over each other to tell you. That's exactly what I was going to yeah. Thank you for saving me because that's what I was going to say. <laughs> All good, you know, baby girl. And so my whole point on that is like over the years, you know, certainly my, in my entire life, but since you and I have been together, the number of times I've heard this and you know what? Comment if you've been in this situation, you've changed. Yeah. Well, and it comes with this, like, I better have. how dare you change? Yeah. How dare you get more fit? How dare you make more money? How dare you be more happy? Right? And, and like, so we've all experienced that to some degree. Now, the one of the things that I wanted to kind of connect to what you were saying is it's not unlike our thoughts. If you don't learn how to control your thoughts, your thoughts are going to control you. Every time. If you don't control your change, change is going to control you because it's going to happen whether you like to it, like it or not. Yep. Right. And like, so why not hold the reins on it and control it and evolve and and do it with purpose, right? That's the the angle I come at it from. Absolutely. I love Neil McDonald's comment. Your positive change seen by others makes them jealous and want to bring you down. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. When you make positive change, it unsettles the people around you who are white knuckling and afraid to change. Right, and then people don't right? feel equipped necessarily to deal with that emotional Absolutely. tug of war. So you you bring yourself back down to where they are as opposed to keep on climbing. One hundred percent, exactly right. Yeah. So now another thought I had about all this, this whole change thing, is that change is not active. Mm-hmm. Change is passive. Mm-hmm. Right? Change happens. Evolution happens. Your job is to let it go. Flow with it. Right? Mm -hmm. But one of the ways that I realized in thinking about this this morning, that we've become so good with respect to the whole change and just kind of gambling it all, is exposure therapy. Mm -hmm. 
honestly, exposure therapy. Yeah. What haven't we done? Right. What haven't we grabbed each other's mm-hmm. hands and jumped off a fucking cliff mm-hmm. with over the last eight years? Yep. We've, we've exposed ourselves to massive change. Yes. And the more you do it, the more unconscious the process actually becomes. Mm-hmm. You don't look at it as a big deal anymore. Yes. And I think the big one for me where it all started for us was you were a single mom in Montreal with two kids who was mama bear protective over making sure you never brought in a male influence mm-hmm. who wasn't going to do the job of raising these kids. Mm-hmm. And I was a bachelor in Chicago who had a bachelor's lifestyle, mm-hmm. but you let me in. So I packed a bag and drove 17 hours without having any fucking idea right. what was going to come of it. Mm-hmm. And you all know the story. I still had an apartment in Chicago. I didn't know how it was all going to work out. I had to pay for things here. I had to pay for my apartment back there. I mean, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was 17 hours in a car to think about, mm, is this the right choice? Yes, absolutely. Right? But that was the first exposure therapy we did. Boy, that, that fucking worked. Yeah, and you know, right? I mean, that's a huge that one, was, right? That was like, I, I, I lobbed you a softball. I said, boy, that worked. You're supposed to say, yeah, baby, you're the best. And we've had such a great, you're supposed to do that in front of everybody. Yeah, baby, you're the best. And I we've swear had such a great life. I found that was condescending. <laughs> you may proceed. Um, you know, I, I just want to say, because that really is, we, I want to say that's one of the ones that we actually underscore a great deal. Yeah. But we've had a lot of questions come our ways over the years insofar yes. as how, how did we make it work? You know, we, we just, we went from, you know, I was a single mom, you were a bachelor to now we're a family, Yeah. you know, and, and now we, how do we navigate that family Absolutely. and all the changes? Like, I mean, think about the things that changed. Your lifestyle changed. My lifestyle oh, changed. The kids' lifestyle changed. Yes. Our routines changed. Our, our visions changed. Yep. Everything changed. Sure. One night when you packed a bag and drove to Montreal, you know, like it, Absolutely. it was the, and it was the greatest was, reward ever. That's what I'm talking about. That was more like less condescending. It was condescending. <laughs> I love a couple of comments here. Jessica says, <laughs> I just walked to the mailbox with you guys in my hand and my neighbor was laughing. She That's was awesome. hoping her book was there. That's really great. That's awesome. I love, <laughs> I love that. Good morning, Kristen, as well. Um, yeah, I have a couple more things to say about that whole change mechanism thing. Can I talk about it from a business perspective? May. Can I talk about it from a business perspective? May he? May I? Okay, here's the thing. And like, if I was selling something at the end of what I'm about to say, mm-hmm. I actually might feel guarded in saying it with as much outlandish nature Mm -hmm. as I want to say it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I'm not selling anything. So I'm just going to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Every entrepreneur who just skates by, your one problem is mindset. Mm -hmm. And the mindset you have is limiting your ability to simply just invest in your fucking business. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all. Our business, you can skate by forever. Mm -hmm. You can always make $60,000, $80,000, $100,000 a year pretty kind of phone that in like that's even that's not even that challenging yeah. necessarily right but when we decided to invest in our business by hiring people who were smarter than us mm-hmm. and who knew more than we did yep. and were specialists in the respective thing that is when our collective bank broke yeah seriously and we've we've given you the number over the last 12 months yeah. we've invested one hundred and fifty two thousand dollars of our own money mm-hmm. into specialists and mentors and coaches who helped guide us and make decisions with us and and everything else. And it was the greatest money I've ever spent. Mm-hmm. And I want to I want to make sure that this is very clear. Mm-hmm. Okay? Over the last year, yes, we've made great money and we've had money. That's fine. But, but, our first investment, mm-hmm. which came about four years ago, was f- scary. Because mm-hmm. we did not have the money. Yeah. We were investing in someone who we trusted. Absolutely. And it was a big amount of money we had yep. to invest and we did not have that cash. Yes. So you and I did what you and I always do. We flowed with change. Yes. We sold your car. Yep. We downgraded our home. Yep. We became minimalists, like card carrying members mm-hmm. of it. Um, people always say like, oh, I don't have the money to invest. You do. Mm-hmm. You you just, you you don't want to sacrifice what you have to get what you don't have now. Yeah. And that is where this all started. Yep. Right. The whole show today started with the power of change right. in, in my carbs. Mm-hmm. In order to get what I want, I have to be willing to do what isn't comfortable. Yeah. That absolutely. is the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Right. But the way you perspective it in your brain is what makes it not uncomfortable, not as scary. I think Seth Godin's the one who says it like eliminate this bullshit that you've got to get to a place where you're not afraid anymore. Mm-hmm. You've just got to be willing to dance with fear. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. That, that, that's your real condition. So just to finish no, my no, point. Of 
entrepreneurs, you absolutely must invest in your business. Mm -hmm. And you must do so bigger than you are right now. Mm -hmm. It is the only way to produce success unlike the one you've already had. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming you want to grow a bigger business, yep. make more money, and serve more people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not selling shit. Mm -hmm. So that was just blunt and honest, but it's true. Yeah, hundred percent true. You know, um, the thing, there's a couple things that came to my mind there. And I'm going to, I'm going to circle back to the beginning of what you were talking about with regards to business and our changes in one minute. Um, but I actually want to make the point, um, with regards to, I think, you know, if you're watching right now and you can relate to this, I want you to actually chime in and say, that's me or that was me. Okay. Yeah. How many people avoid change or sit on change because they don't have a guarantee of the outcome. That's okay? right. You know, exactly. And th think about what holds you back, right? We, we want a guarantee. Yeah. I want the guarantee before I start eating, you know, 140 grams of carbs a day that this is going to work. Yeah. I want the guarantee before I invest $2,000 a month in a coach for my business that this is going to work. Yeah. I want the guarantee that you're never going to leave me before you move to Montreal. Yeah. But here's the thing. You're never going to have a guarantee. It's never coming. Like you can't nope. possibly, we can't predict the future. Yep. So if you can't have a guarantee, your choices are to stay stuck and mired in an existence that's eh, kind of okay, maybe yep. not so much, or to jump off the cliff, take the risk and know that you got this. Like you, yeah. you have, you can, you got your mindset on your side. You're, you're going to navigate it and yep. you're going to make good decisions along the way. 100%. That's exactly it. I mean, I, I love the way you phrased that. Everyone was chiming in with me. That's me. That's me. There are no guarantees ever. There are no guarantees. Yep. I have no idea of going from 300 grams of carbs a day to 140 mm -hmm. is going to deliver me what I want. Yep. I can tell you one thing it's day one and I'm hungry as fuck right now. Right. Right. That's all I do know. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty minor thing. Nutrients. Talk about money, putting yourself out there. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah, you're never going to know. You're never going to know. So you're going to sit not knowing. So, you know, I don't like to use the term mediocre life mm -hmm. because I don't think people resonate with that. I, I, I think when, when I say stuff like mm -hmm. that, I end up hurting people's feelings. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's right. feelings. But here's my thing on this whole concept of mediocre life, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have dreams in your heart that you aren't either doing in the process of or pursuing, then that is too mediocre for how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're mediocre. I'm saying the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. A fucking star in the heavens blew up and the dust came to earth and made you. You're stardust, bitches. You have the quantum fucking ability to do anything. Mm -hmm. And you're holding yourself back by waiting for someone to give you a guarantee. No one's gonna give it. Yeah. No one is gonna give you that guarantee. So I would know, you're not mediocre. You're just playing too fucking small. Yep. Having a mediocre life doesn't mean you're mediocre. It means you're dishonoring and disrespecting how fucking epic you are. Completely. Go fucking be epic. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand investing in yourself is part of that. Absolutely. Steve Jobs individuals don't create amazing things. Mm -hmm. Teams of people mm -hmm. create amazing things. And, and that means you got to invest. Yep. You got to invest in people who've been there, done that, know more than you. Whether it's business, health and fitness, goal attainment, come to one of our retreats, anything like that. You've got to invest in you. Absolutely. When you do, you unplug the energy bottleneck that's been created. Completely. Yes. Everybody, I love that. I was waiting. When I do this, by the way, guys, I'm like trying to encourage you to hashtag. Oh, yeah. So start us, bitches. You guys are the start best. You know, with regards to, I'm going to circle back to what I want to say with regards to us and change in business. You know, because we've yeah. made some, some significant changes in business over the last five years. Yeah. I, I'm going to go to most recently. Okay, which most recently I'm talking about a year ago now. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the decisions that we made was actually to do what we refer to as taking oars out of the water. Yes. Right. You know, for yes. those of you who don't know, Brian and I owned a company, the Mindset Performance Institute, which was a certifying entity in in the fitness industry that certified people had to become mindset specialists and wildly successful absolutely and wildly we, successful. we sold it last year to pta global it's yep. a i don't know what it stands for to be on personal trainers something <laughs> <laughs> i, I should have known that but pta global and that was like we we had something that was wildly successful but we knew with where we wanted to go yes. that we probably needed to change that and take that out of the, those oars right. out of the water yes and we could have sat on that for months and months and months and sure. years or sure. tried to navigate it all well let's circle it back to guarantees 
Yep. We had an organization that was churning out lots of money, lots of graduates, and lots of success. Mm -hmm. We gave it all away to chase something that we felt more. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave us a guarantee mm -hmm. that if you get rid of this company that's actually doing really well right now and yes. start fresh with something new, that it's going to work for you. Exactly. Nobody gave us the guarantee. Nobody. But we know better now. We know better. We know that when you review your direction and you learn your language and you imagine your outcome and you count your wins, it works. Mm -hmm. It never doesn't work. It works all the fucking time. You want to know why? Because we're stardust bitches. Yeah. And we know that. We released to that yeah. years and years ago. Absolutely. There ain't nothing we can't do yeah. if we choose to do it. Yep. Pure and simple. And, and that's the mentality that everybody needs to carry. I completely agree. Yes. And I just came up with a great summary line. Be your own guarantee. Oh, damn. Be your own guarantee. Hashtag that. Right? Like, if, Be your own guarantee. You know where Hashtag. Our, you know where our guarantee happens? Our guarantee happens every morning from 5.30 to 7 o'clock in the morning when we sit upstairs and we do our own mindset journaling, Brian Carey, in the morning. Like you guys, you know, for those of you who are doing it, that is our guarantee because that is where we get to control everything around us. Wow. So stop trying to get other people to be your guarantee. Be your own guarantee because that is Shit. where you get what you want in life. That was sexy. I got Lee Patterson, okay. Jessica, June, all hashtagged it. I love Robin Ann Camley. Hashtag BYOG. Be your own guarantee. Be your own guarantee. I love that. I just made it up. That was a solid mic drop. Y'all just, I gave myself a mic drop. You should. You guys just all, that was because of you guys. And Can you. we put a Where My Crew at up? Because you know our crew is Absolutely. just the best ever. I want to just get the crowd. Hey, Crew Nation. Where my crew at? Crew! 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 This show deserves a second where my crew at. Oh! Oh, I thought you were going to do another one now. No, that was our second. I know. I thought you were going to go again. Because <laughs> our crew is the best. Uh, our crew is the best. Be your own guarantee. You know, it's great timing. On top of it all, because we have our company, Brian and Kerry. That's us. We That's us. <laughs> We have a chief operating officer. We do. And he actually lives in Cyprus. He does. And he's actually on his way here right now. He is. We're picking him up from the airport tonight. We are. So we actually hang out with our chief operating officer probably once a year at best. And this is our first time. So we're going to be hanging out with him once a year at best because he lives so far away. Mm -hmm. But we have a, we've had to invest a lot into this one character who's going to come and help us take to the next level. Yep. And you know what? We have no guarantee. Completely. We're the guarantee. Yes. We're the guarantee this is all going to work. And you know, I'm going to add yes. to that for one yes. second. Because, we you know, we talk about investing. We, we, a lot of people automatically think monetary investment. Energy but time. I want to take, talk about the other investment. Yeah. Okay? Because we're, we're investing money, uh, money, time, energy. Yes. But, you know, one of the things that I could say that I'm investing is um, trust in, in, in our COO and yep. stepping out of what would be considered my comfort zone. Right. I am usually the project manager yes. of anything we do. Yep. I am usually the organizer, but I am investing in stepping back and letting him do his thing and being along and, and uh, an active participant on the journey, which Absolutely. is a big deal. So don't look at it as only money. I just want to add Stacy and Colleen are both asking if he's going to be on the show this week. He's actually a rather handsome young man. Yeah, I'm sure Maya's already got a crush yeah, on him. Yeah, so yes, we are going to parade our COO around uh, Brian and Karen in the morning this week. He doesn't even know that yet. Right? So hopefully it's okay. I also want to add something. Neil McDonald, I don't disagree with you. I think we all get to have our own perspective, right? But that sentence, death and taxes are the only guarantee in life, I actually disagree. Mm. My perspective sees it very differently. I think that is very myopic, standard societal language. I disagree. I think you guarantee for yourself what you want if you do the work necessary up here to make it happen. Yeah. That's what we've seen. Mm -hmm. That when we do the work, as Carrie said, 5 o'clock to 7.30 every morning is our journaling, our mindset, our collaborative time where we do the exercises that we suggest you do. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are creating our guarantee. And it has not not worked yet. And I have no reason to think it won't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm going to throw a question out to all of you. And I'd love for you to chime in if you feel comfortable to chime in. What are you sitting on changing 
that you've been waiting to yeah. change? Because today, this is a good question. You know, so I run, um, I run a fitness group for women, and it, you know, it's a group on Facebook, and yep. I've actually got them on board over the next five months of jumping in with their own intentions for the next five months. Yeah. So today is a day that Brian and I are starting a new journey. Yes. In our fitness culture, so right. we're changing some things up. What are you going to commit to starting to change today? And our business. Yeah. Our oh, CEO, right. our CEO is today, coming in I, today as well. It's like I, a, today is a change it's like day. A double whammy. By the way, I, who's into spirituality and, and nature? Where's Mother Nature? Where's Connie? Connie's there somewhere. Check this out, okay? Today is a brand new change day for us in our training and macros for nutrition, which is a big part of our life. Mm-hmm. It's a brand new change day in our business. Our mm-hmm. COO is coming into town. So change, is, this is like a pinnacle change for us, right? When we do our morning time upstairs every single day, mm-hmm. you got to understand, there's like 30 feet of windows that yep. we're staring out mm-hmm. of and there's a balcony up there, mm-hmm. right? Do you know who popped in on us and sat right on the windowsill and looked at us? And it's like, never happened before. To, and it's never happened before? A robin redbreast. Yeah. Just sat there looking at us for two minutes. And I said to Kara, I was like, there's something symbolic there. Could you Google that? Because I didn't have my phone. Yep. For all of you who think I just sit around all day telling my <laughs> wife what to do. I did not have my phone. She did. So she Googled it. Robin redbreast, their presence in your life mm-hmm signifies change. Mm -hmm. I find that fucking fascinating. This is a pivotal change day in our world. And there was Mr. Robin Redbreast Mm -hmm. hanging out. And he's never done that before. Yeah, it's exciting. I find that shit goosebumpy. Absolutely. I love that everybody is is chiming chiming in. Doing tarot professionally is my sitting on. Um, uh, Nicole, restarting my business is what I'm truly passionate about. I'm ready for a new journey, Lisa. Love you. Yes, um, Lisa. Mama what amazing, traps. amazing comments. I've been working hard on my mindset, but my body is next. Be- lovely layering, Lee. Good job, Lee. Way. Change involves layers. <laughs> lovely Lee Patterson. Good girl. You guys are the bomb. That's odd. You know, it's, it's so funny. Like, it's not funny at all. Uh, mindset for the most, but I have committed today to simply a better me every day. Yeah. Excellent, Angie. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't relate to putting myself out there. I can understand it. Being concerned about putting Yeah, I can't. I can understand it, but I can't relate. Put myself out there. Yeah, I mean, look what we do. Yeah. Brian Carey in the morning. Yeah. And we have our fair share of critics. But you know, it's, it's amazing. Like, when you get past that hump, mm-hmm. there's just, you're off to the races. Yeah. And it never changes. You never go back to mm-hmm. being worried yeah, about absolutely. putting stuff out there. That's something to consider. I agree. You know, and I've watched, can I, I'm just going to chime in. And, and for those of founders of yours, so Brian yeah. runs a mastermind, a founders group for entrepreneurs. Um, for those of you who are watching right now or re-watching this later on today, yeah. like I have watched on the side over the last several months as you've been working with these uh, these particular people yeah. and how some of them had this 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 fear of putting themselves out there. Oh my God, but yes. But now they're doing it yeah. and they are out there. And it's like yeah. that, that initial jump to make the change, but then once you make it, it's like there's a snowball contagious effect. Can I brag? Of course I won't say who, I won't say who it is because it's not my place to say who it is. I know exactly who you're going to talk about. Right? So I work in my founder's mastermind for entrepreneurs. I work with a couple Mm -hmm. who resisted the idea of putting themselves Mm -hmm. out there on social media for like four months. Mm -hmm. They overthought it. They they procrastinated. They made all the normal excuses to me to why they weren't doing it. Finally, we got their mindsets to a place where they're doing it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. This past weekend, everyone listening this past weekend, they made Mm $40,000 in a seminar that they, they did live, a two-day seminar, mm-hmm. all because they just put themselves out there yep. on social media. They didn't even have to sell the seminar. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to take sales calls. They don't even have a sales page. They just put themselves out there. $40,000 in one weekend because they, they finally took my business advice of how to market using social media by being you mm-hmm. and without marketing. And I just want to add... Um, Vince Maltz just came on here. He said, yup. Vinny, I was wondering what you said yup to because I want to talk about you as well. Yeah, Vince is fantastic. Yes. Let me just chime in really quickly because Neil McDonald just asked how to get his hands on the journal that we're speaking about. If you go to www.achievethegoalsyouset.com, yeah. all the information is there on how to get hands of your the journal and the entire program that goes with it. Absolutely, you. yes. So Achievethegoalsyouset.com. Because yeah. it's not about learning to set goals. It's about achieving the ones you set. Exactly. exactly. Ooh. Ooh. We just said that at the same time. It was, so sing- it was like the Robin Redbreast. You know, Connie commented about that. She's about like, the, the Robin, yeah, I saw that. Positive change in your, you should look for positive change in your heart's desire with the Robin appearing in the morning. I love that. Connie, you need to get out there in the world. 
Yeah. Do, do you know how many people we know who would hire you in a second? Yes, I agree. In an absolute second. Uh, Vinny says, I came in the middle of what sounded like you talking about putting it out there. Yeah, okay, so Vinny, as long as you're here, there's another example. Mm -hmm. I worked with Vince and his wife Marissa for a while. Yeah. By the way, I just want to say this, okay? We Part of the MPI company we owned was a licensed program called mm -hmm. MPA. That's right. Okay? Yep. There had been a couple of people in MPA who didn't find success, and I don't hide that. Mm -hmm. I don't hide the fact that not everybody who comes to my programs is successful. But can I tell you what my honest-to-God feeling is? Mm -hmm. The people who do the fucking work always find success. Always. And Vince and Marissa are a card-carrying member of that yes. crew. You're talking about a guy who finally took my advice, put mm -hmm. his kids on camera, was funny, was himself on camera, and now he's just like, him and Marissa own this business that is landsliding. Yeah. Working with hockey players all over the world, yes. from adolescents up to pros. Mm -hmm. I am just, I have so much love for the Maltz clan. Me as well. And yes. you know what? I am, I am going to give the da 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 comment of the day. Oh, it's time. I'm actually going to give it to Vince Maltz for what he just said. Yes. It took me a while to get comfortably, to get comfortable, get out there and find my voice. And the reason I'm giving that to Vince is because if you were to catch any of Vince's videos now, you would be thinking to yourself, this guy was uncomfortable, uncomfortable? at some point right? in front of a camera. So I, I just want to give a mad props to Vince. It's and all about finding your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Major love for you guys, Vinny, right back at you. You guys, could come, your family got to come up here. Yeah, because we want to, we want to like, we want Nene to come and stay with us for a while. Well, and, you know, and Vince and Marissa well, too. Well, Vince and Marissa And come. Nash. Nash can come. Anyways. <laughs> That's change, right? Change yeah. happens. So you're going to resist it, which is what most people do, mm -hmm. or you're going to flow with it, which is what successful people do. Yeah. So everybody who's expressed the desire to, yes, I'd like to do more. I'm kind of holding myself back. You, the universe is conspiring in your favor. Mm -hmm. It's trying to deliver to you what you're asking for. It's trying to deliver to you what you want. You're not letting it. Exactly. So this is not you having to create energy and knowledge of change. This is you letting go mm -hmm. and letting what happens happen. Because mm -hmm. that's the way change works. Yes. What a show. You know, it's a good thing we were planned and organized. No, nah, Vinny, we want you to, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, right? Of course. Not please. bad for a show that wasn't uh, overly planned. You know, I, I, for those of you who've spent... Oh, wait. Heather Marike. Yes. Welcome to the show. This is your first time, I am assuming, chiming in. Oh, so right on. welcome to the crew. Welcome, um, welcome, welcome. This is how Brian and I spend most of our time, by the way, is talking in conversations exactly like yeah. this. So that was inside and intimate in one of our conversations. Absolutely. Really Look intimate. at Aaron, Aaron Johnson. Oh, I just love... I love crew. I love, I love crew. crew Nation. Well, I tell you what, guys. We'll be back tomorrow morning, as always, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9.50 Eastern is when our pre-show starts. All the fun happens then. Come back tomorrow. And as always, don't forget how we close Brian and Carrie in the morning. Review where you're going. Count the wins along the way. Imagine all that glory and be mindful of what you say. Take care. Bye.